Jim Cox to give us an update. Thank you. Uh, Mayor Henry, Mayor Pro Tem Pettis, Council Members Carnavale, Kaplan, and Aguilar, City Staff, Fellow Arts Commissioners, and members of the public. Hello. So I came to you about, uh, I think it was about a year and a half ago, I think, and gave my first uh, update. The ideas for those uh, in continuing is to let the uh, council members and the public uh, know what the Arts Commission is up to, what we've been doing, what we've done, and what we're talking about doing in the future. So now a year and a half later, I'm here to just give you a little update and a report, tell you what we've been up to, what we're thinking about, and how we're moving forward. <clears throat> Since the last time that uh, I came to you, um, we've been really busy, and we have a number of new uh, pieces added to the public art collection. And I'm going to start with... Um, this is the piece uh, by the internationally known and renowned sculptor Betty Gold that is now uh, gracing our, the Paseo of our City Hall. This is the, actually the last piece that we purchased. And uh, we're very proud of the fact that we've been being very creative uh, with public arts and not spending a lot of money. Um, but this piece uh, is in the Paseo, and there's another shot of it. In addition, um, this was given as a donation. Uh, it's a painting called uh, Indian Gathering, and it's upstairs in the staff offices, and it's by the well-known local painter Val Samuelson. And, uh, And if you'll remember, when I came to you a year and a half ago, I gave you the first information on a major new project, and these were donated sculptor, sculptures by a well-known sculptor who has a place in Joshua Tree, and his name is Simi Daba. And at that time, we had arranged uh, with Simi that he was going to give us a donation of five major pieces. I know these are really big, major sculptures. Um, since that time, three of them have actually been placed in our city. This is uh, one of them. This one we called Thunderbolt. Um, these are all just sort of nicknames of these pieces because Simi just names a piece the date that he created it. And I said, well, you know, it's kind of hard to call that 22503. So um, anyway, we came up with just nicknames for these. This one is at the corner of. Um, uh, Cathedral Canyon and Dinah Shore. You're looking down Dinah Shore uh, toward the east right there. And this one is in place. This is right outside City Hall. We call this one Swiss Cheese. This one is also in place. This one we call Chopsticks. And you're looking west on Ramon Road at Daval. And of course, Daval is. Um, well, we, we call these uh, our portals to the city because these are the entrances and exits to our city. And so Ramon Road is one of the, the main thoroughfares through our city, and this is at the um, eastern end of Ramon Road. There are two more pieces uh, that were donated by Simi Daba that are not permanently placed yet. This piece we call Massive, and you can actually see it right now. This and the other piece that are not permanently placed yet are now um, right behind the Desert Max Cinema next to the city garage. Both of these two pieces have been uh, temporarily placed there by our public works department so that they can at least be on view and not just laying in pieces um, in the public works yard. This piece, we, do, we thought we had a definitive place for it, and that didn't happen for various reasons, so it's still looking for its home. We have discussed the possibility one day of having it in one of the new festival parks um, that are going to be outside City Hall. 
All right. This is the other piece that's not yet placed. We call this one Big X. Uh, you can see the size of it. That's a man who's six foot one standing next to it. This piece is also on temporary display over here next to the city garage. And this brings me to um, one of our uh, hoped for projects, and that is to place art at the I-10 interchange with Date Palm, which is the entrance to our city for many thousands of people who travel east and west on I-10 through the Coachella Valley. They take the Date Palm exit to come into or out of Cathedral City. So our concept is, this is a, a mock-up. It's not actually there. I just sort of placed the, photoshopped the X there. This is at the, if you are traveling down I-10 and you're coming up to Date Palm and you're, take, you're going east and you take that exit up to Date Palm, there very conveniently happens to be a flat surface area. Same for the uh, westbound. Now, of all of the new interchanges along I-10, conveniently, the only ones that have these flat spaces are at Date Palm. The others have just concave depressions. We have these flat areas, kind of perfect for art. Um, the plans have actually already been submitted to Caltrans to see if we can get their approval to move forward with that. And this is another mock-up from further back. You see the uh, exit going up to Date Palm on your right. Um, and since we've been discussing this very, this issue, now that this sculpture, Big X, we actually own already. It's already been donated to us. Again, it's uh, on temporary display outside. But we've actually talked to Simi about acquiring another piece. And this piece is 45 feet wide. Um, I just nicknamed it Big Smile, kind of looks like a smile. Um, Simi is willing to donate that piece to us as well because we thought, well, if we're doing a piece of art at the eastbound exit on Date Palm, why not one coming the other direction at the westbound? That would also fit beautifully in that flat area. So this would make the sixth major sculpture that Simi would be donating to the city. He's ready to do it. We've submitted the plans to Caltrans for the possibility of two art pieces <coughs> uh, in those two locations. We'll see what Caltrans gets back to us, and we'd also appreciate input uh, from City Council and direction on that. Um, one of the most exciting projects that we've been talking about for a long time is to have some sort of public art um, memorial to Lalo Guerrero. Of course, he's one of the city's most important residents. City Hall is on Avenida Lalo Guerrero. And for a long time, we were talking about the possibility of doing a mural. But the location that we had um, has issues. Um, and we had talked off and on about the possibility of a bronze statue. But we were under a rather false impression that the price for a bronze statue would be $100,000 or more. Uh, we have since found out that it's not that at all. And so it is doable within the general area of our public arts budgets for sculptures. Um, we have a Chicano uh, sculptor named Ignacio Gomez. And he's the one that has made this drawing for us. This is the possibility of having a life-size, six-foot-tall bronze uh, statue of Lalo, very lifelike, singing and playing his guitar. Um, it would be on a pedestal, but it would still be not too high so that it's very real and approachable. The advantages, of course, to a bronze uh, piece is that it'll last forever, basically. Murals don't. Eventually, they're going to need to be repainted or fixed or they just disintegrate. Um, the bronze would last forever. This sculpture would cost us approximately $46,000. And our general limit in the past has been approximately $40,000 for a new piece of art. So this, we think, is very doable. We've also discussed the idea. Um, this is just a quick sketch done by the sculptor of how a little plaza might be. On the left and on the right would be uh, something possibly in 
It's possible in bronze that would tell some of the story of Lalo Guerrero, one side in English, the other side, of course, in Spanish. Um, this would be a perfect addition to the new festival park over here. We've already discussed it with uh, Pat Milos, possibilities of places there. Um, he says that it would be good for us if we had sculptures and artwork there, and this might be a really perfect candidate to start that off. Um, one of the things that we've discussed about this is to really get community involvement, and the sculptor, Ignacio Gomez, is, is in contact with the group Los Lobos, and we're talking to them about the possibility of a benefit concert. Um, the idea for that would be twofold. One, to really get the, our Latino community involved in this project and also to raise part of the funds. So maybe we don't have to pay all 46000 We can get some of it in community involvement, um, do other fundraisers perhaps. Los Lobos, they did a, um, a fundraiser benefit concert for a major memorial to Cesar Chavez that was done in Riverside that had an overall budget of $450,000, and all of it was from uh, private funds, donations, hospitals, uh, benefit concerts, and Los Lobos uh, practically worshipped at the feet of uh, Lalo Guerrero. So he's uh, very big in the uh, Latino and Chicano music world. Um, this is... That's a uh, life-size sculpture of Cesar Chavez that Ignacio Gomez did. It's not the big one from Riverside. This, I think, is in Ventura County. Um, he's done, uh, so at least twice already, he's done memorials to Cesar Chavez. So it just gives you an idea of his work. It would be very lifelike, realistic, but the one of Lalo would be happy and joyous because that was Lalo Guerrero. So he'll, he would be singing with his guitar. So that's one of our exciting projects we have on the boards going forward. Um, I also wanted to talk about some of the things that we've uh, done in the last uh, year and a half. We continue to have our exhibitions in our gallery space, which is inside the lobby of City Hall downstairs. Um, we had a very successful exhibition with the artist Tim Townsley, who's a local painter from the Cathedral City Cove. And we also had a, an exhibition of photography by the world-renowned photographer Donald Craven, and Donald Craven um, photographed um, a lot during the uh, march in Montgomery in the 1950s. He made some very iconic photographs, and we had our opening on Martin Luther King Day, and we, it was our most outstanding opening yet for an exhibition. We had about 175 people. I think some of you were there. John, I'm sorry I forgot your name that day. Have you forgiven me yet? No. Um, no. Anyway, so th that was a very successful opening, and uh, we have scheduled for September Ilona von Rone, who is an Austrian uh, portrait painter, but she also has a place here in Cathedral City that she spends her winters, and we'll have an exhibition of her portraits in September. We also had our second annual data student uh, film and photo festival this year at the Mary Pickford Theater. Uh, kudos and thanks to uh, Ted Hain and everyone at, from the Mary Pickford for their uh, great help with that event. Um, this year we added photography to the festival, so now it's film and photography. So it involves both of the key classes of the uh, data program at Cathedral City High School. And our festival differs from uh, Digicom and some of the others in the Coachella Valley because ours is exclusively with the data program at Cathedral City High School. So it's just with those students. So we had prizes, awards, trophies, the full nine yards for the winners uh, from the film competition and the photography competition and the students got to see their work projected on the big screen. Now the 10 photo finalists from that competition their works have been framed uh, 16 by 20 in nice frames, and that will, within a matter of days, be the next exhibition going up downstairs in City Hall lobby, those 10 works of art by our high school students. 
Uh, we plan on growing that event. It was very success successful for us this year as last year, and we plan on growing it with more support and uh, making it bigger and better. Um, I wanted to mention briefly the Ramon Road Project. Now, as you know, the Ramon Road Project for the city was all about, not all about, but it was about um, new uh, medians and uh, cleaning up a bit the streets uh, all along Ramon Road. And part of that is that pedestals for public art were planned for and placed, four of them, along Ramon Road. The first one that got its piece, I showed you a moment ago, was Chopsticks. That's at Ramon Road in Daval. The second sculpture that's in place is called Wheel of Time, and that's right by Date Palm. And that sculpture actually used to be where Swiss cheese is now, next to City Hall, if you remember that one. It's smaller than that. That's now on Ramon Road. The third pedestal moving uh, westward from there, uh, we have started discussion on the Arts Commission to possibly have a competition amongst local artists who would submit designs, drawings, what have you, and the winner that would win that competition, their sculpture would be um, commissioned, bought by the Public Arts Commission, and placed permanently on that pedestal. Then that brings me to the uh, last of the pedestals, which is all the way down Ramon Road at the other portal to the city, and possibly one of our most important, certainly in the number of cars that pass through that intersection every day. And that's Ramon Road at Landau, this side of the bridge to Palm Springs. As you all know, there's a project uh, that's now in the hands of Caltrans to redo that bridge and the Vistachino Bridge. And the designs are very beautiful and artistic. And we think that we should have a pretty spectacular sculpture there as a welcome into our city as people come over that beautiful bridge from Palm Springs. We had the idea after we found out from uh, Pat Milos that the uh, Agua Caliente tribe of Cahuilla Indians was a major supporter financially for that Ramon Road project. So we had the idea, why not tie things together a little bit, and when we come up with the sculpture to place there, to perhaps make it uh, in commemoration and a memorial to Milanovic, the longtime tribal uh, chief. Uh, we, Pat and I had a meeting with their PR person at the tribe. Uh, we proposed that. We wanted to know what they would think of that. Did they like the idea? Uh, she loved it. She proposed it to the Tribal Council, and they were very excited and very honored by that possibility. So that's something down the road that we're talking about to find, you know, what would the piece be and so forth. Um, they would not be involved in it. We're not asking them for money for that piece because they've already paid a big chunk of the Ramon Road project. So this would just be a thank you and a commemoration to Milanovic. Going forward, we've talked to them about working with them on other arts projects and getting their financial support because we found out that they do financially support arts projects in Palm Springs and other communities. So we'll talk to them later about those things, but right now we'd like to do this commemorative sculpture. Um, so that is the uh, Ramon Road project. And lastly, can you help me clean that other? Um, this is one of our most exciting projects that we'd like to announce. And that is a project that we've been uh, discussing in the Public Arts Commission for the last three and a half years. I don't know if I'm, I might have mentioned it vaguely when I was here a year and a half ago, but it's about ready to launch. We're going to be the first city in Southern California that I know of, certainly the first in Coachella Valley, to have a mobile app for our public art collection. Um, the beta version has already been done and prepared. The photos are ready. It's all in there. It's just n not quite ready for, to launch. There's a little bit of tweaking on text and so forth, but it'll soon be launched. We have the, uh, a hosting company. Um, and talk about bang for your buck, this uh, is going to cost us $400 a year to maintain this. So that's about $1.20 a day. So it's pretty inexpensive. It, but we have to do all the, you know, they don't do it for us. Uh, they just give you the software, put it together, and gotten the photos in there. But this is, now, the, this app is only available for mobile devices. It's 
So there was no way that I could get the actual, I wanted to have the actual app up here to show you and navigate through it, but you can't do that. It's only for mobile devices. So what I did is I did screen grabs. So this will just give you an idea of what it looks like. So this would be the first page. It's called the Cathedral City Public Art Collection. And the way I've done it is I've made two tours, let's call them. One is a driving tour, because you would have to drive around the city to see these pieces. The other one, though, I call a downtown walking tour, because actually a large part of our public arts collection is in this downtown area, and you could walk, um, you could walk around to look at it. So this is what it would look, this is on an iPad. Now, mind you, on an iPad, you're looking at it in landscape version, so it's horizontal. And on a phone, because this will work on all iPhones, Android devices, you know, any kind of mobile device. But on a phone, it'll be a vertical thing, so it'll look a little different than this. But the screen grabs I did from an iPad. So you'll see this here is the downtown walking tour. And it has the names of the pieces. The first one, of course, is Fountain of Life. And it says by artist Jennifer Johnson, and then when you click on that, I can't right here, but I'll show you in a moment, you'll get information, you'll get the name of the artist, you'll get the name of the piece, you'll get um, how it was acquired, was it uh, bought by public art funds, was it donated, um, you know, a lot of information about it, and you'll get a lot of different photos. There's probably 12 different photos of the Fountain of Life, showing you from different angles, some close-up shots, this then is what it would look like when you click on Fountain of Life. Um, you see the little map there? The little pin shows exactly where it is. Okay, that's in our town square right there. Now, when you're there, you can zoom in, zoom out with that, and uh, you see the information down below. This is uh, the Buddy Rogers statue, showing where it is. This is the old firehouse, which is the mural on the building um, just the other side of the Desert Max. Uh, this is the Betty Gold. This is Mountain Cathedrals, which is um, our furthest piece out for the moment until we get something at the I-10 inter interchange. This is on uh, Date Palm, nearly to Vista Chino. And of course, this is the sculpture that is the same as our city logo. logo. This is when you click on the photos, you come to a gallery and then you see all these different versions of the photos. This is the Dinosaur Bridge, which is all the mosaics along the Dinosaur Bridge, which were done by the students of Agua Caliente Elementary School in the fourth grade. And there's a lot of photos there showing not every mosaic, but most of them. This is the uh, historic photo collection, which uh, of course you see inside City Hall. These are all the great photos of the Indians and Union and Union soldiers. Um, and there's every piece along those corridors is here that people can look at. Now, we'll get to the point where some of these pieces are not, they're, they're technically on public view, but it's not easy to get to them. So the concept is, and, and we look for guidance from City Council on this, because we feel that everything that's in the public art collection should be available to be seen if somebody really wants to. So we'd like to have guidance. You know, how do we do this exactly if somebody is looking at this mobile app and they'd like to see these? Can they come to the reception of City Hall? Can they get upstairs? Can they be escorted there? I don't know how we work with this, but we'd like to be able to have the entire collection available to the public in some way, shape, or form. The problem with two-dimensional art, of course, is that we don't have many walls that are in the public eye where we can have them. So that's why we have a lot of them upstairs. We have one piece in the public library on the wall. We can't have too much two-dimensional art because we don't have a place to put it. Now, this one, you'll see the map on the left. When you hit at the bottom, see down here it says list and GPS. We were in list form before, now I clicked on GPS. So you see all this, we're on the downtown walking tour. You see all those green pins? That's everything that's right around here from the uh, Arroyo um, painting that's in City Hall, the Fountain of Life. 
the Perfect Union sculpture, which is on uh, 111, close to uh, Date Palm right here. All of those pieces are within walking distance of each other. And you also can, let's see. Now, when I pulled back, you see the blue dot with the circle to the, down at the bottom left? That's my house in the cove. So in other words, the GPS picks up where you are and it'll show where you are by that blinking blue dot. I think you've all seen that on maps on your devices, right? So when someone is in the area of the downtown, it'll, it'll show them where they are and it'll show them where the nearest pieces are. So they could just walk around and, and click on a piece, find out information about it and see the photos. And that's all of the photos, and that's all of my talk. Do you have any questions for me? Any questions? <clears throat> uh, Jim, uh, there's some additional uh, projects scheduled. Um, 111 um, to Date Palm and Vista Chino. And I don't know whether you've had conversations with Pat yet or not, but I think there may be more opportunities for art mm -hmm. associated with those. Um, like the Ramon Road project, then what? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, th the problem going forward is going to be having the money to acquire the pieces. Um, as you know, budgets have been tight. When, when budgets are tight for developers, we don't get the influx of funds into our public arts funds. So if we had a lot more money, hey, I'd love to. Vista Chino, we're right to have more pieces further out into the city. Um, we just have to have the money or find other creative ways, donations, um, but I totally agree, we'd love to have more pieces. We'd also love to, for some time we wanted to have uh, something on, 111 is possibly our most important corridor through the city. The, so, Getting pieces at the portals of the city, I find kind of important. You know, it sort of says something when you're driving from Palm Springs and you're driving in Cathedral City to see a beautiful piece of art with, the, you know, the name of the city there. I think that's nicer than just a little sign that says population 56,000. Um, again, we have to find the locations. The, the, the uh, eastern portal on 111, down there where that, that, that church is, there's no place to put a sculpture. Been, I've been down there, I've checked, I've looked, I've taken photos. There's just no place to put it. Um, it'd be a perfect place to have a great piece. Um, but if we're gonna, with the, these new projects, if you're gonna be giving us pedestals, like you did on Ramon, um, at least it gives us placement, and then we have to come up with ways to do it. But I think that's great. I'd love to get as much public art around this city as possible. Thank you. I know, Jim, you're doing a fantastic job of, of getting art out there and, and actually getting recognized. You know, I've, I've been to a couple of events and I said, oh, you know, we really loved going to this. We really liked having that and seeing that. So that's been really good. Uh, the other thing is when you get Los Lobos here, uh, I'll buy the first two tickets. Okay. <laughs> okay. So let's see, that's two, two, two. That's... That's 10 up on the dais. Uh, but uh, like I said, you're doing a fantastic job. Are yeah. there any other comments or questions? Also, uh, another thing too is that uh, in the back of my mind as we're working on all these projects and coming up with new ideas and everything is to also give the impression, I'd love to give the impression valley-wide that we're not just a little poor city in between. You all know what I'm talking about that you know we're kind of arts forward we're you know we're 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 a very modern new city and so i'm also going to be working more on getting uh press media when we when we launch this mobile app that's just ripe for getting lots of great press on that because that's really that's something that young people do all the time and i think it's going to be a great thing for us fantastic thank you you're welcome Are there any public comments Seeing none, we'll close public comments.